Hello everybody and thank you for taking the time to join me for today's webinar where we're going to be looking at blended learning with maths. My name's Hayley, for those of you who have joined us in previous webinars, thank you for joining us again. And for those of you who are new, welcome. Um, today, looking at blended learning, we previously looked at blended learning in um, English or literacy, and today in maths or numeracy, if you like. Now, we previously like touched upon what blended learning actually is. Um, and it's a combination of online learning or online educational materials combined with normal, and I say that in inverted commas, um, normal classroom methods. But it's also a great example of independent or individual learning and um, contains some elements of student control over the time, pace, place and path of their work. Now, anybody who has visited previous webinars knows I love a project because they're a great, great way of showing sort of independent learning in terms of blended learning within different subjects. And it's a really good way of getting um, to know your students as well, getting to know sort of the time they take, the pace, the path that they go in, particularly with that independent work. So today, looking at the blended learning with maths, I'm going to um, start with a think it. Again, I've used think it's in previous webinars. I absolutely love them. And they're really, really beneficial in terms of investigation or project work. And then we're going to look at a couple of supporting tools in terms of the times table resources, topic tools, and the teacher resource pack. Now, as always, I'm using a made up English school. So do not worry if you see any student names, they are completely made up as are the staff names. And it is an English school. So do, um, don't do worry if you're visiting us today from Scotland, Northern Ireland or anywhere else outside of England, I will point out the differences for you. And finally, if you've got any questions, please hold on until the very end of the webinar where I can give you our email address and you can send them over to me. And we do love hearing from you. OK, let's get started, shall we? Head over to Education City. And here we are on the home screen. Now, if it takes you to the old home page, don't worry. You can click onto the ribbon just there and it will bring you to the new page. And today, if I just shrink down the side panel just there, I'm going to be using the subjects area. Now you can see it is available on the left hand panel and the icons will match as we go through. So if we head into subjects and obviously into maths. Now this area might look slightly different to you in terms of saying literacy or numeracy. And obviously when we go in here, obviously this may look slightly different as well in terms of having sort of early first or second, and then the year groups just here. But it's the same format in terms of you go into the um, age range or the year group that you're looking to work with and you can filter down. So I'm gonna go with lower key stage two. So that's year three and four or um, P5, P4, if you're um, from Scotland and a think it we do love a think it now the great thing is at this point um we can filter down and have a look for some investigation um there we go some investigation i think it's just there um but sometimes it may be worth just filtering another way you could use the unit function down the left hand side here so if you're doing fractions, for example, and this may appear slightly different again um, for you. Obviously, Education City is curriculum mapped, so this area will be mapped to the curriculum that is used. So we can have a look down here. I'm just going to use sort of the search function. I can click onto one of these as well and just work my way through using the forwards and the backwards arrows if I need to until I find one that I might want to look at. Now you'll notice at the bottom just there, you've got your objectives and it will tell you if it covers any specific objectives. Here you go, this one's a good example just there. Um, and again, this will be relevant to the curriculum that you follow. 
and then there's a bit of a summary above that as well so it will show you whether or not this is what you're looking for whether or not it will cater to your needs now this is the one that i want to use again the more you use education city the more you'll become familiar with it and then you'll you'll get to a point you think ah, oh, yeah that's the one that i need um like i've done today um and you can see you've got your think it just here i'm just going to open that up in a new tab so that we can have a look at it separately and this one really really um fun one um and a great sort of start off investigation in terms of new academic year maybe um or the end of the academic year because it gets you um understanding what the children have learned or maybe gaps in the learning for the um, next academic year and you can see here you've got i found a pattern in this multiplication table i've highlighted it what do you think i found in terms of the pattern so the children can have a look at that and then obviously you've got the answer there that Sten's giving you, but you've got a next step question underneath as well. So that's really useful benefit for ThinkKids. They will either come with a greater depth question or um, a next step question underneath or after the answer. Now, if you didn't want to give out the answer straight away, you can give out the ThinkKids question. And this is a printable, um, but there's nothing to stop you from popping it into a folder if you need to. And then you could always pop the actual think it into the folder to follow. And you can see there you've got the lines for children to actually write their responses on as well. So these are the ones I'm going to use. I'm going to create that folder, think it's, and I'm going to pop the think it's question in. OK, and then we're going to create that folder. We've got the classwork, we've got the homework just there, and I'm going to create a new folder now. Um, called times table investigation obviously you can call that whatever you need to i'm just going to create and um, there it is just there right at the end there and just make sure that that orange plus is a green tick that tells you that those tools have been in that folder and then we've got that somewhere at the end there as well to tell you those tools are now in the folder so that is how I would start um, this investigation, looking at this thing kit and those multiplication patterns and patterns you can find across the different times tables. Now, if I just head back up to the top and back along our breadcrumb trail, I could then go into the times tables resources and then actually, if I want them to do an investigation into maybe the six times tables and the three times tables or the fours and the eights, as an example and do that comparative investigation i could head through here and find those tools four times table just there and if i click on the ad you've got the video along with some activity sheets i could add in i'm just going to add the video into that folder just now there it is just there and again make sure the orange plus turns into a green tick and save okay and then I could go through and add in the eight times table one as well. Or I could then click onto the actual activities themselves. And I'm going to add the activity into that folder as well. And obviously, you know your children, you know what um, particular age range or um, skill level they're at. And then you, you'll be able to sort of figure out which of these you want in there. So let's head over, pop that in, there we go, save. Because I also mentioned the topic tools. Now, if I head back up to the top here, and again, back along that breadcrumb trail, here we go. Saves you having to go back to the homepage and start all over again, this breadcrumb trail, really useful. I'm going to head into the topic tools just here. There we go. Now you can see this little blue circle um, with the sort of iPad picture in there. That is the icon for tablet friendly tools. Um, and you'll see a lot more um, tablet friendly resources come in soon. But for the time being, feel free to explore what's already here. And here I've got the grid tool. Now, this is a really, really useful um, topic tool, sort of thing you could use in lessons, um, if you're modeling work or if you're working with a particular group of children. And in the settings, you see you've got 
you can have a look at just sort of the 10 times tables if you wanted to shrink those down even further if you just want to look at certain ones it's really beneficial just there and you've got the times tables that you want to look at now i'm going to select all here close that down and then you can start looking at maybe the twos and the fours if you want to maybe the three and the sixes um or like standard looking at all of the odd numbers there if you wanted to but it is a useful tool in terms of having um sort of that color coordinated system and being able to track um which particular times table you are looking at now you could put this into a folder if you need to um to send home but if your children haven't got um a laptop or a computer at home don't worry um so let me just add this one in as we talk about it just there and save if you have maybe they're working on an ipad or a tablet at home what you can do is head back to the home page and have a look in our free resources now at the bottom here we've got our quick links to these different tools but we also have our free resources so our printable resource packs really good different subject areas but also for different times of the year such as Diwali, World Book Day, Chinese New Year, Remembrance Sunday. And here is the teacher resource pack. This is so useful and contains so many tools, but all those things that you probably um, spend your PPA time making. I know I did when I was teaching, um, spent forever creating these tools. And I'm just gonna scroll down, um, obviously have a look in your own time. And you can see we've got our number grid just here. So it's, well, out of that you can see there's that number grid just there and it's a sort of thing you could maybe um save in black and white and then send home in an email so that children can use highlighters and color in the um particular um times tables that they're looking at so really really good tools just there and then once you've finished once you're happy with that folder and that project work remember to tell the children what it is that you want out of them so we're going to change this there we go and let's pop uh what color let's go with orange there we go and we can pop some instruction here so we can ask them to investigate um set of times tables for example and maybe leave it up to them how they present it to you as well because you know then the ones that are a bit artsy and crafty they might do that the ones that are more technological, maybe they'll put um, a PowerPoint together for you. Um, but leaving it to them, it's it's sending them down their own path again and letting them sort of explore the learning in their own time. And then obviously, once we've done that, you go through your students' read preferences and your tracking tabs and just work your way along. So that is everything for blended learning with maths today. Um, please do take a look at those tools and remember that all of our webinars can be found on our YouTube page if you've missed one or if you want to refresh your memory a little bit. Also, if you're thinking we're missing out on any webinars that you would like to see, do let us know. A number of our webinars are being created um, for the future based upon your feedback. And you can send that feedback to our email address just there along with any questions or queries that you might have for us. We do love hearing from you, so we'll hopefully hear from you soon. Until next time, take care and stay safe. Bye bye.